Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to today's online service. Yes, Merry Christmas here in August. Today, we set our sights upon the nativity window found in the back of our sanctuary. Now, if you are joining us for online worship today by computer, please see your screen looks much like this one here. Just below our video, if you scroll down slightly, you will see a button that I have circled here. It says, show more. If you click show more, it will reveal in the description box our entire bulletin for you to use and participate with us today. If you are worshiping with us using a cellular device or a tablet, your screen should look something like this. And you'll notice there is a little arrow down on the right, it is circled here. If you click that arrow, you will get the same drop-down box with the entirety of today's bulletin. If you are worshiping with us via Smart TV, please refer to our website listed here on the bottom of your screen, fpcbryan.org. Once more, that is fpcbryan.org. Not only can you go there for a printable version of our bulletin, but we also invite you to see what we're doing here in the life of the church programmatically and through local mission. We thank you for joining us in worship today, and welcome. today. Isaac Watts began one of his well-known hymns, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. That's a paraphrase of Psalm 98. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Would you join us in singing hymn number 133, O Come All Ye Faithful, singing stanzas 1, 3, and 4. universe, vulnerable prince of peace, spirit of new life always, 
The psalmist described you as a shepherd. The prophets described you as the Holy One of all. As we approach you confessing our wanderings and sin, hear our prayers in these moments of silence. By the gift of insight from your discerning wisdom, gracious one, we acknowledge that we often prefer receiving more than giving, and that we often prefer being served more than serving others. By your grace, forgive, help, heal, and transform us for reconciled and partnering relationships with all others, so that day by day, we faithfully share your love, respect, and resources in the way and spirit of Jesus Christ. Friends, let us hear and share the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now the word of God read is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Hear now the word of God. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they became terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Now when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing which has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. And now a reading from 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. Whoever does not love God does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way, God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, 
God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What has he or she left us? It's a question that might be asked when a group of heirs or potential beneficiaries are awaiting the reading of a will. What has he or she left us? Occasionally, though, that can be said upon discovering uh, something exists which may be more valuable than you or I previously estimated or regarded. And that's how I feel about the Christmas window above the balcony over the east entrance to the sanctuary on 31st Street. Since I first saw that window in 2007 and before we began this series considering the 11 covenant theme faceted glass windows, my eyes have almost continually focused on the oversized angel in that Christmas window. I say oversized, but honestly, I've never actually seen an angel. Possibly, most angels grow to eight feet tall and have a wingspan of 14 feet. Then again, for all I know, perhaps they grow taller and have a wingspan even wider. Maybe this eight foot tall angel is only a sixth grader. But I'm wondering if this one is not this size in proportion for a reason. What if angels are not actually as real as human beings or as real as fish, birds, or four-footed mammals, reptiles, and amphibians? What if angels are a literary creation to make a point? If so, this would mean angels are not scientifically or material real, materially real, but as a literary creation, they are important, even crucial. And this one portrayed as being eight feet tall with wingtips 14 feet apart behind Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus is undeniably prominent in this faceted glass windows illustration of Christmas. Angels are the literary creation of Bible storytellers. They carry messages from God in the heavens to God's people on earth below. What size are they? Since the Bible never describes the size of an angel which a storyteller is employing, the angel is the size that the artist portrays. In this particular story and in this particular window, let's remember that the only angels actually described in Luke chapter 2 appear in the pastures outside of town to the shepherds where the shepherds were on duty. One appeared with an announcement about the birth of the child in Bethlehem, and that one is then joined by a chorus of angels out there among the grass and rocks. The chorus references and reinforces and emphasizes the glory due to God for all which the baby represents. So get going, shepherds. The message from God through the angels is, this is life-changing and this is world-changing. Get going. Yet in Luke chapter 2, there is no angel at the stable crib room. No angel that can be seen. This is worth remembering as we consider the artistic creation of Smith Glass Studio in Fort Worth, brought here and installed in 1966. The Bible story from Luke chapter 2 tells of no angel visible at the Bethlehem stable labor, delivery, and nursery space. Isn't this then exactly 
the point of the particular artistic portrayal? Isn't it likely the theological conviction that arrests our attention? I never knew Gordon William Smith, who was the artistic supervisor and co-owner with his brother of Smith Glass Studio, where this and the 10 other of these windows were produced. I never knew any of the adults who served on the building committees of First Presbyterian Church in 1963, 64, 65, and 66. I know less than five of the junior high youth at the time who were asked to participate in the planning and theme development of these windows. And I knew none of the employees of Smith Studio who might have participated in the actual artistic design details of these windows. Here's what undoubtedly, though, can be affirmed. No matter what child, youth, or in-studio design artist came up with the idea of portraying an angel eight feet tall with a 14-foot wingspan present behind Mary, Joseph, and that baby in a manger with a shepherd at each side, since the Bible story mentions no such creature, angel, being there, that background creature is there for a reason. Because Gordon W. Smith convinced the building committee of this church, or the building committee of this church convinced Gordon W. Smith that this portrayal was and is legitimate to faith in the world, and was and is legitimate as a conviction of God's people. I don't know about Mr. Gordon W. Smith's faith journey in its specifics. I know his memorial service was conducted in 2010 from First United Methodist Church in Fort Worth. I also know that his avocation, his passion beyond his professional craft and business was with Native American art and the story of the people who originated that art. And between the time when he was five years old and his parents took him to Glacier National Park and the adjoining Blackfoot Tribal Reservation in 1925 until his dying days 84 years later, Gordon W. Smith was fascinated with that community of God's people their gifts, their challenges, their suffering. He once told an interviewer, my dad was born in Parker County in the 1880s. My grandparents were North Texas pioneers. I never heard them or their friends say a kind word about the Plains Indians. And I don't imagine the Plains Indians had a kind word to say about the pioneers either. Yet from my earliest memories, I always wanted to be a Plains Indian. My parents, who were very considerate people, encouraged me in that. My dad was sympathetic and understanding. The Native Americans, of course, were originally the locals on this continent who, by pressure from the new arrivals, were pushed over and pushed out and finally were pushed onto land called reservations. Across his years, uh, interrupted only by World War II, Gordon Smith cultivated friendships among Native Americans. He came to understand their gifts, their art, their stories of struggle. And what does that have to do with this oversized figment of your imagination angel in a faceted glass window? The letter to the Hebrews of the New Testament, chapter 13, begins with the words, Let God's neighborly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for in such encounters, Many have encountered angels and not been aware. Remember those who are in prison as though you are in prison with them 
and those who are ill-treated, since you also will experience struggles. Hebrews chapter 13, the first verses. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for in such encounters many have encountered angels and not been aware. I'm suspecting that Gordon Smith believed that and wanted to convey such a message both through artifacts he collected and life relationships he developed. The First Presbyterian Building Committee may or may not have known about Gordon Smith's avocation and cultivated interest in Native Americans and their historical struggles and their art. And yet they hired him for these windows because of the person he was and the talent he brought to this project. So we ask, what then did Gordon Smith and that FPC building committee leave us? In 1977, Archie Jordan wrote a song which launched the career of a young Christian vocalist named Amy Grant. Now, about the same time, uh, country singer Ronnie Millsap would sing the same song uh, with, a, with a romantic uh, angle, but Amy Grant's song is sung as in relationship to God. What a difference you make in my life. Love to me was just a word in a song that had been way overused, but you gave love a meaning, so I joined in the singing. That's why I want to spread the news. What a difference you've made in my life. It's an easy tune to sing and wonderful lyrics, but it would be a mistake, Amy Grant would tell us, to think that love is easy from God, either in your life or in anyone else's life, in any time or place. As romanticized as Christmas and faith are often characterized as being. This window shows how a stable is not romantic. It is the best, rather, of a few hard options on a dark night for a woman in labor and her partner. A livestock stall, the best of a few hard options, where a baby embodying the love of God for the universe is born recognized by only a few shepherd ranch hands at the time. Poet James Russell Lowell would describe in 1845 how this baby became a man and his life was taken from him upon what Lowell calls the scaffold, which was a cross prescribed by authorities of empire and religion. Yet, the baby grown to be an adult who is crucified on that cross, that scaffold, wrote Mr. Lowell, always sways the future and behind standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above God's own. Friends, the story portrayed through this window by an architectural artist from Fort Worth and authorized by a church building committee in Bryan 54 or 55 years ago is a story that was alive before any of them and after them of God who both becomes involved personally in the time of the Roman Empire as much as in the time of any other empire and of God who from the shadows keeps watch both above and behind God's own. So much more than an oversized angel is the reality into which Gordon Smith and a Bryan Church Building Committee have hoped that you and I and others will grow. It is a reality of life journeys which will make a supreme difference to each and every other one because we will recognize and partner with all others of God's people in the hard journeys that we all share. As God, 
stands within the shadow and keeps watch above and behind God's own. All honor and praise be to God. Would you join us now in singing the first verse of Angels from the Realms of Glory and the first verse of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. and choral glorious, where they worked in the fields at night, O oh God, and were moved to hiking into town with curiosity and wonder. Receive our thanks for all that is holy, which attracts our attention. When we are slow to praise and serve, prompt us to pick up the pace. When we are reluctant to go in a direction toward which you are encouraging, prompt us further. When anyone's grief is raw, Bring your soothing into that person's life. When our attitudes are uncooperative, condition our brittleness for flexibility. And when our outlooks are despondent and our pain is oppressive, lift us with trust in you for confidence in grace, healing, and loving care. When justice seems far away, close the distance which separates any person or community from respect equity, and well-being for each and all. And share your wisdom generously, because we are always standing in the need of your wisdom. Also this morning, hear us again as we pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you now join us in singing, O Holy Night, the first and the third verses. Christ was born. 
His law is love, and His gospel is peace. Chain shall He break, for the slave is our brother, and in His name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord then ever ever praise we his His power and glory evermore proclaim. Friends, go out into the world like shepherds. Always look to see and always listen to hear for God's presence in this world. And may you do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.